Okay, so let's keep going. Um, by the way, guys, if you don't comment on the blog, I have no idea if you're alive or not. So please just comment. I'm, I'm also getting a lot of people who are saying it's tough to comment on the blog. Um, so apparently, they're they're typing things in and they're, it's getting deleted uh, or it's disappearing on them. I don't know what's going on with that or what the problem is. I'm going to look into it uh, and I'll see. But, you know, really, just email me. You don't have to. If, if, if you're having any trouble at all posting on the blog, just email me your comments. Um, cause I just, I just want, I just need to know that some of you are alive at this point, by the way, um, the number of students, we, there's basically about one third of one out of every three people in my classes has shown up to the blog. So I don't know, this semester is really going to be a whole thing. Um, all right, well, let's, let's, let's try to get a little farther into, uh, into this situation today and kind of see if we can wrap up this whole conversation. Um, if you can call one person talking into a selfie stick a conversation. Um, so, so he says, um, right, here I clip the anvil of my sword and do contest as hotly and as nobly with thy love as ever in ambitious strength I contend against thy valor, right? That our bodies are close. I'm hugging you because I love you. And it's just the, it's it, it's I'm I'm loving you just as intensely as I as I fought contend against thy valor as I fought against your bravery, and then you get this. And this is really the most dramatic line in the entire play. If you're interested in sort of this kind of homoerotic subtext, know thou first, I loved the maid I married. Never man sighed truer breath, but that I see thee here, thou noble thing. More dances my rapt heart than when I first my wedded mistress saw bestride my threshold. Um, <laughs> some of you, that is so obvious, by the way, um, that when we watched the movie in class, I noticed that some of you guys were like, what did he just say? Um, it's amazing. Um, Alphidius says, you, uh, he says, listen, you know, I'm a married man, although interesting, by the way, you never see Aphidius's wife. Um, I think, I imagine that like Coriolanus's wife, um, he's not really, uh, she's not really much of a presence. Um, uh, and, and he says, he says, listen, I'm a married man. Um, and he says, and I, he, and he says, I was never, when I saw my wife on our wedding night, I wasn't as excited to see her as I am to see you right now. Uh, that is a really intense thing to say to somebody. Um, but that is 100% what he has just said. Um, um, more dances my rapt heart. My heart is happier um, than when I first my wedded mistress saw bestride my threshold. Um, and by the way, when you first see your wife come into your house... It's because it's your wedding night and you're going to have sex. Um, that's one of the reasons why you would be excited to see your true love walk through first come come into your home, because it means you've been married. Um, uh, so it's just fascinating that he says he hugs Coriolanus and he says, you're the anvil that I hit my sword on and you're a noble vessel. Um, and then he says, I'm happier to see you right now than I was to see my wife on our wedding night. Um, like, oh boy, like these guys are in love with each other you know, any kind of complicated, unconscious way. But there's something, there's something, Shakespeare is is showing us something about relationships between men. Uh, by the way, um, I'm not a sports guy, um, uh, and, but, and some of you guys are sports people. Um, one paper topic I'd love to hear about um, is to talk about Coriolanus and talk about homoeroticism in male sports. Um, there's a lot of um, men hitting each other on the butt uh, in baseball games and basketball games and things. And that's interesting um, because um, professional sports uh, like baseball and football and basketball have been slow to accept uh, openly queer teammates. Um, and it's fascinating to me um, that the, the two things at the same time, the, 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 the lack of visibly gay uh, football players, basketball players, um, along with a culture where all of these guys who I guess are, you know, think of themselves as straight, um, are hitting each other on the ass to say good job. Um, and it's a, there's definitely something to talk about in there and to compare soldiers to sports figures and, you know, the sort of perfect male bodies and athletes and there's something in there. Um, but I will leave that up to you because I don't know anything about sports. Um, so he says, he says, I'm so excited to see you. And he says, why thou Mars? And by the way, Mars is the god of war. So he's saying Coriolanus, he, he calls him the god of war. He says, I tell thee, we have a power on foot, uh, meaning soldiers, 
Um, and I had purpose once more to hew thy target from thy brawn or lose mine arm for it. Thou beat me out 12 several times, right? You, 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 I've fought you so many times and you've beat me more than 12 times. And then you get this. And I have nightly since dreamt of encounters twixt thyself and me. We have been down together in my sleep, unbuckling helms, fisting each other's throat, and waked half dead with nothing. Uh, fisting there, by the way, just means punching, uh, and does not have for them, I think, the sexual meaning that it would have for us, although it could, and um, you know, it's a sexual act. I'm not going to describe it in a video. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, I'm leaving it there. Um, but I don't think that that is in there, although he, it's, it is an unusual word that he uses there, but I, I doubt that. We'd have to look that up, and I, I really doubt that that's a sort of sexual meaning there. But the passage outside of that word has a very intense sexual meaning, um, right? The, he says, thou hast beat me out uh, 12, sev 12 several times, right? You've beaten me so much that at night I dream of fighting you. I dream, and by the way, the word encounters. He doesn't say I dream of fights. He says I dream of encounters. That sound. Remember the Batman thing that I, I read to you guys before, where it was unclear if you wanted to kill him or fuck him. It's the same thing here. If you're dreaming of somebody every night, um, we have been down together in my sleep. I think he means wrestling, um, unbuckling helms. That means taking their helmets off, um, and fisting each other's throats, just punching each other in the throats, and then he wakes. Um, but he, if, if you're dreaming about wrestling and fighting with someone every single night, uh, you may be in love with them. This is a pretty basic sort of a Freudian dream analysis thing. Um, your body's en entwined and the blah, 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 blah. Um, and so it's just, it's just a fascinating little detail. Um, Worthy Martius, had we no other quarrel else to roam, but that thou art thence banished, we would muster all from twelve to seventy, and pouring war into the bowels of ungrateful Rome, like a bold flood or bear it. Um, they're going to destroy Rome. Um, bowels there means like is like intestines. Um, and I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. There's a little bit of uh, like we're going to fuck Rome up the ass here. Um, we're going to we're going to pour our soldiers into the underbelly of Rome and destroy it. Um, it's interesting that their sort of sexual talk feels pushed into war talk again with Macbeth. We talked about that too, where the violence in the battlefield is it becomes a kind of uh, sexualized in a way. Um, Oh, come go in and take our friendly senators by the hands who now are here, taking their levies of me who are prepared against territories, blah, blah, and, and then they team up. Um, and this is, it's, it's, it's just, a, it's such an insanely dramatic encounter um, between the two men. Um, it's one of the things that makes me nuts about this stuff, though, is that I read like a, like a, like a hundred page book about Coriolanus. And in the hundred pages, nobody suggested, it was an like essay collection, different people. Nobody suggested that they were really uh, in love with one another. Uh, and I couldn't believe it because it seems so obvious when you look at the kinds of metaphors um, and language that the characters use. By the way, let this also serve as a lesson um, for those of you who have, uh, you know, when I tell people to read Shakespeare, I think a lot of my students don't. They just rely on summary. I get a lot of papers from students that never quote the play once. They just say, this character does this, and this other character does that, and this other character does that. Um, and they never really uh, talk about the play. But see, if you just read a summary, there's no way to tell they're in love with each other. Um, but if you if you read the actual language and the and if you get a translation you might miss it too, um, but if you read the actual words Shakespeare gave them, um, there's a lot in there to pay attention to, and it's why in your papers you really need to be quoting things, um, uh, because it's the only way to get to Shakespeare. Because here's the thing: Shakespeare didn't really come up with most of these stories himself. Coriolanus was a real guy who lived in ancient Rome, and Coriolanus took this story uh, from kind of an ancient Roman history book. Um, so it's it's. It's why what Shakespeare does is he gives it the words. So that's why you've really got to study uh, Shakespeare's words in particular. And with that, I think I'm done with this video. Uh, I think I'll probably do another one uh, about some related thing uh, laying around with my camera. This is fun. Uh, okay, and I will see you guys in the next one.